So I went to the store, see if they had any air tags, and they had one left. So now I'm gonna unbox it. Okay, it says to activate Bluetooth and then pull the tab. I'm about 300 meters away. I'm gonna turn Bluetooth back on and see what happens. So now we're gonna attach it somewhere on the bike. So the obvious place would be under the saddle. Maybe it's possible to put it inside here or inside the bell. Under here. And the bell would still work. Now you might be wondering, what is voltage-based fault injection, or as it's more commonly called, glitching? Well, simplified, if you take the power supply to for example a microcontroller and you interrupt it for a very short amount of time, you can manage to change the behavior of the chip, and so for example you can corrupt memory reads and even skip instructions. Now if we imagine the boot of a chip, at some point in time there might be a check that is similar to this one. The chip checks whether debugging is disabled, and if it is, it will skip enabling the debugging hardware. However, if we manage to glitch during the exact time of the check, we might be able to trick the chip into enabling the debugging hardware. And that's exactly what I did on the AirTag. Naturally, this is not super easy, but it's also not super hard. Yeah, anyway, uh, check out the video uh, from Stack Smasher, also known as Kidralinia, for more information about how he managed to extract the firmware from the AirTag. Uh, but the main points to take away from this is that 
it is possible with this glitching attack to uh, enable debug mode and attach a JTAG uh, hardware debugger and extract the firmware. And uh, you can make changes to the firmware and reflash it. And to reflash the air tag, you don't need uh, debug enabled. You only need debug enabled to extract the firmware. You can reflash without doing the glitching attack.